What would you do if you always got into trouble for not following schedules or joining in group activities? Not because you didn't want to, but because you actually couldn't. How is it possible to get really bad grades and always be sent to the principal's office, but win medals in academic events? Do you ever feel different? Do you get the feeling that other people think you're weird? Hi, my name is Joshua. I'm 12 years old and I'm here to talk about the effects of being different and how I found refuge in music. These questions may seem confusing, but this describes my time in elementary school. I had trouble sitting still and needed to be doing something with my hands in order to concentrate. There were so many things in the environment that would make me feel as if my head would explode. However, there were some teachers and principals who understood my situation, tried to help me, and created a place for me to work. Things got much better. The year I felt integrated, respected and valued. I made friends. Unfortunately, the school changed hands. I was miserable. Instead of realizing that I was having a crisis, the new teachers would reward me for bad behavior. Instead of allowing me to do origami, for instance, to calm down and listen to class, they thought I was not paying attention. All of this would lead to more anxiety, problems, and unhappiness. It was harder to make friends and I felt more isolated every day. It seemed that no one took the time to understand my specific needs. I ended up looking for escape in the library. My parents took me to all kinds of specialists and received many diagnoses. But a diagnosis does not solve the problem. It is still necessary to understand what it means, how it works, and how to manage it in everyday situation. During this process, a wonderful thing happened. I discovered classical music, which became a refuge in my world. Through classical music, I learned to understand my feelings, calm down, and better deal with different situations. And how did I find this safe place? I have always reacted to sound. It is to see if there is always music in my head. At the same time, when things got difficult for me, more melodies filled my head. Since Mexico does not have specialized schools for people like me, I ended up in homeschooling. I started playing around with a melodica, picking out songs for movies. One day, I had Beethoven's release and I wanted to play it, but I couldn't do it in a melodica. It was time to learn how to play the piano. The piano was so different. I could move with the music and it didn't bother anyone. I used my hands to create music and harmonized it with the melodies I had in my head. It was magical and I could express what I felt. Looking for music online, I found Stephen Sherman Olsen. When he played the cello, he had a special connection with his instrument and I wanted something like that. In Prague, I heard the string quartet. It was the first time I heard that cello in person. I told my parents I wanted to learn how to play another instrument. I had discovered something even better than the piano, the cello, an instrument that vibrates music along with me. Every note I play on it brings me a sense of comfort. Learning a musical instrument has taught me patience, tolerance, hard work and commitment. I also realized music could help me identify my feelings. Some music gave me joy or helped me when I was annoyed, sad or afraid. But other music didn't give me peace, but made me angry and aggressive. I wanted to know why. I started reading about the effects of music on the brain. 
Of the 52 identified areas in the brain devoted to specific aspects like reasoning, imagination, and feelings, music activates and stimulates 47 of these. Music is especially helpful in increasing intuition and decision-making skills. So where am I going with this? I invite you to think about the music we're exposed to and how it can influence our behavior. For example, in classical music, I learn about history and different contexts. It helps me to recognize feelings and sensations with which I identify. Both cello and piano have led me to masters such as Bach, Mozart and Beethoven, who all along that teach me to express myself through music. Classical music can help our bodies come into harmony. It shouldn't be approached as a form of torture and boredom, but as a way of sharing, expressing, feeling, discovering, and relaxing. Musical instruments at home are important to help people create, imitate, or experiment, as well as to enhance this experience. If we learn to play an instrument, it helps us deal with frustration. It teaches values like patience and perseverance while giving us a sense of achievement. Thanks to classical music, I have been able to make important changes in my life. The cello has provided me with unique experiences. Socially, music has helped me become part of a few groups, such as a string ensemble and an orchestra. I truly belong to these groups because we have things in common, especially our love of classical music. Whether you are different because of a disability, limitation, or giftedness, is there really a difference? If we get to know each other, respect each other, and interact with each other, we can learn how to isolate ourselves less and begin to climb out of situations of depression and anxiety. With the help of music, I was able to go out and say, this is me. I value myself, my feelings, my tastes, and my thoughts. I can be who I am and be accepted as I am. As Albert Camus once said, being different is neither good nor bad. It simply means being courageous enough to be yourself. You see, all of us who behave differently, we're not weird or problematic. We just need adults who do not force us to be what we are not, who get to know us, respect us, and guide us in what we should learn, <laughs> even with our differences, to contribute something good to society. We want to be supported, respected, and valued for what we are. Children or teenagers, but above all, human beings. Now let me take my cello so I can play a piece to finish. Thank you.